The client has a spreadsheet with thousands of rows. He wants an AI chatbot that answers questions like, how much did I sell last week? How would you solve this problem inside of NAN? If you search for a video explaining this, you'll mainly find vector database related solutions. It won't work for the majority of number related questions. The query would be vectorized and placed next to similar vectors. The closest documents would be found and used as context for the AI to answer the question. That's why a question like, what is the price of X would work, but the client's question wouldn't, as the AI wouldn't have enough context to know. A vector database is basically a powerful string comparison tool, not a structured data analysis tool. You also can't send your entire data over to the LLM either, because there is a context window limit, and this wouldn't be cost effective at all. My solution is that we go back to the basics, SQL. And I'm not talking about using the SQL agent. At least till the day of this recording, it hasn't been a nice go-to for me. This is my workflow, powerful yet simple. You don't need to know SQL to use it, and it's completely free. It first reads Google Sheets, then finds the probable schema, creates a Postgres table, then finally inserts all the rows inside of there. Great, now that we have the data inside of Postgres, all we need is a nice AI prompting to generate SQL queries. Sit back, grab a coffee, and get ready to steal my workflow and sell its integration for as many clients as you can find. Hi there, I'm Leo, welcome to the channel. Our workflow is actually this one down here, but we'll be testing the other methods because they are frequently used in other videos. And I want to show that they kind of work for some things, not exactly for what we really want, which is fetching for numbers or performing a way better filter on top of the data we already have. There is a really better way of sending data from sheets over to the vector store, which is either by rows or you can choose specific columns if they have a lot of strings. But at the end of the day, a vector store really isn't built for that. And since sometimes we have a really short amount of data, if we set like a limit of 20, and 20 is the amount of rows we have inside of our sheets, that means we're fetching for every single thing that is inside of our sheets. And so the AI sometimes will be able to calculate or understand which row is from which date and then give you a correct answer. But if we operate at scale and have a sheet of this size, you can't send all this to the LLM. And that's what ends up happening in most of the cases. This one doesn't really send everything because you can specify how many documents you want it to fetch. Some people go crazy enough to set this to like 50 and then it brings up like a massive amount of data. And then the LLM is able to answer, not because they set it up correctly, but just because it overloaded the LLM with a bunch of data and maybe in one of those data, it figures out the answer to, to, to the user's question. But that isn't really ideal because as I said, it's not cost efficient. Down here, I have another example, which is attaching a Google Sheet tool onto the AI agent. This is the worst case scenario because it will always fetch for all the data inside of Sheets and bring it over to the LLM to answer. There have been some solutions from the community, which is just filtering everything. So it gives the potential for the AI agent to understand which tools it has and how to filter the data it needs using those tools. Then you end up with some tools like get transactions by status get transaction by product name, get all transactions. So you end up having to create tools for every single situation. If I ask it something, and this one is based off of this sheet, which has up to 91 rows. A simple question I made of what's the amount of widget A sent all these rows over to our LLM. It doesn't need all this to, to answer what, what we want. And in other scenarios, it could end up sending way more than this and then just get really expensive. On top of that, it would need to understand that it needs to use the calculator, calculate every single number it received, and then finally output the result. Now let's go over to our actual solution. I'll talk about the SQL agent in just a bit as soon as we actually have the Postgres table created. As you can see, I have a Postgres database created. There are no tables in there. And as soon as I execute the workflow with test workflow, it'll search for the Google Drive trigger. This right here is the only thing you'll have to change, which is placing the URL of your spreadsheet, place it right there. And then remember to place in your sheet name. As soon as you're done with that, it will just go over to this Postgres node, verify if the table already exists. If it doesn't, it goes on to fetching the Google Sheets, which returns all of the items, which are the rows in there. And then all these rows are converted using this code node into a query that you will run inside of this node then after that, it creates the insertion query, which then runs the insertion query and you get everything into your database working just fine. If I refresh this right here, 
you'll see the AI table product list created with everything carefully placed in there. Heading back to our spreadsheet, you'll see we have a column of date sold, which is basically when this item was sold. Let's grab everything from the 24th all the way up to the 28th, copy that, go over to this website right here, and this will just sum all the numbers for us. At the end, we have 7,541. So that means if we proceed on to ask the AI for this exact question, which is how much did I make from the 24th until the 28th of this year, it should give us this exact number. So this is a message it brought back from February 24th till February 28th of this year, you made 7,541. So let's see exactly how it did that. Inside of its prompting, I specify that it should always search for the schema before executing any query because it has to understand the schema of that table to then create the SQL to search inside of it. But it failed to do this at first and got a relation sales does not exist. Understanding its error, it then used the get Postgres schema. And this was then retrieved. So it now has the context to better produce the SQL query necessary to execute the query tool. At first, it didn't work. And then it tried again. And now finally, it successfully worked. Fetched inside of the table, brought back the exact response. And now the AI just structured as a response to bring back to a human. And now that we have our table, let's try to make the SQL agent answer our questions. So let's make the same exact question. Yeah, I don't think it's 350, but let's see what it came up with. So this was kind of the reasoning the AI had to bring back what we wanted. I honestly think that this agent will be improved eventually. And as soon as it does, I'll make a video explaining how it improved and how you can extract the best of it. So make sure to subscribe to stay updated. Now, two things I didn't show yet was this get post with schema tool and the execute query tool. I'll place everything together in the same workflow. And all you'll have to do is separate the get post with schema from the execute query tool. So at the end, you'll have three workflows. One will be exactly like this. The other one will be just like this. And finally, your main workflow will be this one. And you'll attach those other tools by selecting them down here. Workflows, then select those tools. If I make a question like, when was the test product sold? It should bring me back this exact date, which is the 24th. Yeah, right on. But if I update this to something, let's say the 1st of February, then it really depends on how you set this up. For me, I set it up every day. So every day it's going to fetch my sheets, update my database based on the information it has in my sheets. If I test workflow, not like that because I have to disable the chat message. Let's test workflow now. It'll go through everything, get to this node right here, understand that the table was already created and then delete the entire table, then recreate it with whatever column is correct or whichever rows were deleted, this is all recreated. But yet, this is not the ideal situation. So this workflow can be improved a lot. Because in this case, what you would want to do is upsert the data. So whatever data is changed, then you have to go inside of that specific ID. And this specific ID is set up by the AI table identifier. You would search for that specific ID and change only that column. But for now, this does the trick. Because now if I come back here and say, when was the test product sold? it will have access to the updated value. The absolute hardest part of creating this entire workflow is the system prompting for the AI agent. And the best article I found to help me create it was this one right here, created by this guy, which I will not attempt to say his name, but this is really a cool about section, a 23 year old software engineer and tech founder who builds cool stuff, that, that's awesome. This workflow will be shared in the description. I've posted it to NAN as well. It does take some time for them to validate it, but you'll find it just find inside of the community. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. If you have further questions on setting it up, maybe you want to refer to the classroom section inside of our community, or just head over here and create a post. We'll be happy to help you. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.